Welcome to part two of creating our 3D model of a spinner using Onshape. In part one, we created the model of the bearing. If you missed that step, please consult the playlist. In this drawing of the spinner, we can see that the center has a 22 millimeter hole that matches the size of the bearing. Because we are using a top-down design method, the spinner will be modeled in the same part studio as the bearing and we will use the outer diameter of the bearing for sketching the hole. The design has three circles, 20 millimeters each, evenly divided about the center. The centers of these circles are all coincident to a circle with a diameter of 50 millimeters, making the distance from the center of the object to the center of these circles 25 millimeters. Outside of that circle is another circle with a diameter of 30 millimeters, and between these circles is an arc with a radius of 12 millimeters. The spinner thickness is 7 millimeters, and all of the edges, except for the center hole, has a rounded fillet of 1 millimeter. I've opened my on-shape document named Spinner that I created in part one of this project. I have the Part Studio tab open and I can see the bearing that I created then. If you've not completed this step, please view the video for creating the bearing from the playlist. Using our top-down design method means that we will create our spinner in this same Part Studio with the bearing. I'm going to start a new sketch by clicking on the Sketch button. If the work planes are not visible, hit P on the keyboard to turn on your work planes and choose the top work plane. I'll right click the mouse and choose view normal to the sketch plane or I could use N on the keyboard. I can see the bearing is visible and I can see this outside edge but this is not part of my current sketch it's just the vision of that previously made part. If I turn off its visibility you can see that none of that registers on this sketch I want to use the outside edge of this bearing as part of this sketch, so I'm going to go up here and choose Use and click on the outside edge of the bearing. Now if I turn the bearing off, you can see that I have projected that onto this current sketch, and if later I change the size of the bearing, it will also change the size of the hole in the spinner. Next I'm going to draw a reference line. I'll make this a construction line, snap to the origin. This will be a vertical line. I'll click again and dimension this to 25 millimeters. Hit escape to end that line command. And I know that this top point now is the center of my outer circles. So using a center point circle, click on the end of that line. And the first one is 20 millimeters, and the second outer circle is 30 millimeters. I'll hit escape to end the circle command and just clean up my dimensions. And I know that there are three of these sets of circles. They're evenly uh, distributed in a pattern around the center point, so I'm going to use a circular pattern. And I'll choose these two circles as part of my pattern and you can see this pattern uh, being modeled here for us. And here it's telling me that there are three entities that are being modeled and it's being done in 360 degrees. If I wanted to change the angle I could change here or change the number I could change that. You can see on this little icon of the mouse that left clicking the mouse will accept this and here's my array. Uh, this is pattern. Now I notice that these are still blue which means that they are not fully constrained so if I pull on them with no command active I can see that the center point is not constrained so I'm going to use a coincident constraint and I want to constrain the center point of the array to the center point or origin on this work plane and now they're fully constrained turning black. Next I'm going to put an arc between these. This is going to be a three-point arc 
and I know that the arc is coincident to this circle and coincident to this circle and it has a radius going this direction of 12. While that's the right size, it's not tangent to these circles, which would put it in the proper place. So I'm going to uh, create a tangent constraint between this arc and the circle on this side and the arc and the circle on this side. And that locks it into place the way I want it. Again, this can be patterned around through the other parts. So I'll use a circular pattern choose this arc. Again, it's giving me three in a complete circle, so I will left click the mouse to accept that. And again, they're not fully constrained because of the center point, so I will use a coincident between the center of that pattern and the origin to lock that into place. With that, my sketch is done and I'm going to accept the sketch, right click and choose isometric. Next we're going to extrude the profile excluding the holes clicking on each of those closed regions. I'm going to set the thickness at seven millimeters. And you notice that I'm adding a new part here. I'm not adding to my old one. The bearing right now is not visible, it's turned off. And I'm going to choose the end type as symmetric like we did for the bearing so that it splits the material between the two sides of the work plane, matching the, how we constructed the bearing. With this, I'm going to accept. And now I see a part two created over here. Let's right click on that and rename this. This is the spinner. And I'm going to right click on it again and I'm going to edit the appearance and make this red. I'll turn on the visibility of the bearing and I can see how the bearing fits that center hole. Now, the power of using the edge of that bearing in the sketch of the spinner itself comes if I would needed to edit this sketch. I need say I needed to edit the size of that bearing, that the bearing was no longer available in the size of uh, 22 millimeters, and now the only one available is 24 millimeters. So I changed the outside edge of the bearing. With that, notice that also the size of the hole in the spinner is automatically updated and changed when I change the size of the bearing. I'm going to undo that and you can see how it goes back to its original size. Uh, next we need to create the fillets. I'll use a fillet feature tool I'm going to set this for one millimeter. Notice that tangent propagation is turned on. That means that if I click on an edge, if it finds something tangent to the end of that, it's going to continue to fill it. So if I choose that, notice how it fillets all the way around that particular edge. I could just continue choosing just single edges to fill it and it will add it to my list. But I could also, I'm going to turn off the bearing here first so I can see that I don't get a fillet on that inside. If I choose a window going from left to right, it actually will automatically choose all of the edges. Now, I didn't want a fillet on this, this center edge right here. If I hold down the shift button, I can click on that to remove that from the selection set, shift, click again, and now I don't have a fillet on that inner circle, but there is a fillet on all the other edges. I'll accept that, and you can see that in one step I can accomplish all of those fillets at the same time. With that, my spinner is complete. 
I'll turn back on the bearing and I can see what I have so far.